morning everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of BMC Global Life Al Hilal Health World Nothing But Lifestyle. I'm Anupama Menon. Good health is not valued until sickness comes. In this talk show Health World, we have expert doctors from various fields providing valuable information to assist you all on your journey towards good health. Today's topic of discussion is wisdom teeth. To throw more light on this topic, we have with us a dentist from Al Hilal Hospital, Hamath Town, Dr. Ravina Rose Baby. Her area of expertise is oral and maxillofacial surgery. So let's go over to her and know <coughs> more about wisdom teeth, its extraction, and all the other aspects of wisdom teeth. Doctor, welcome to the show. How Thank are you, you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Thank you, doctor. I'm fine. So uh, can we begin by describing what exactly is uh, wisdom tooth? Uh, how would you define it in medical terms? Okay. Now, with age comes wisdom, right? So specifically, wisdom teeth. Now, your mouth goes through many changes in your lifetime. One major dental milestone that happens between the ages of 17 to 25 years is the appearance of your third molars. Now, historically, these teeth have been called the wisdom teeth. Why? Probably because they come through at a more mature age, because between the ages of 17 to 25 years. Now, while your wisdom tooth can erupt correctly aligned and healthy, they are more likely to get impacted because of the lack of space available in the jaw. Okay, so do you actually need uh, wisdom teeth? I'm sure this question comes up in everyone's mind yeah. because, uh, you know, we can't think of a functional purpose of having a wisdom, wisdom tooth. tooth. So, uh, in, in your opinion, what purpose does it serve actually? So, wisdom teeth aren't necessary. Our ancestors had them because they needed to chew hard food, such as roots, nuts, etc. Today, these teeth have outlived their purpose, considering a change in our lifestyle, our diet, and are no longer necessary. Okay, and so is it important to have them uh, removed? Is it okay if we just leave it like that? Let's say wisdom tooth is not giving you any problems. Do you still think it's important for us to get it removed after a certain age? See, what happens is, uh, like I said, wisdom teeth are the last teeth to grow into the back of your jaw between the ages of 17 to 25 years. Now, in many cases, their emergence can be problematic. So, sometimes being impacted. By impacted, I mean that these teeth do not grow or erupt naturally into your mouth. Why? Because of the lack of space available in your jaw. Now, this has a negative impact on your adjacent teeth resulting in pain, discomfort, etc. amongst many other problems. Now, most of the people do not experience any obvious problems with their wisdom teeth initially. But as time passes by, they could slowly develop problems with their wisdom teeth. Now, why that could happen, right? So, what happens is that if your wisdom tooth is not erupted in the right position with respect to the adjacent teeth, food can get trapped in that region. Now, this will give the cavity causing bacteria a place to grow and this will result in cavities of your third molar, also your adjacent teeth and if not treated at the right time, will result in mild to severe infections and will have to be removed. So, basically it can impact the overall oral health. It's yeah, basically important. it is not erupted in the right position, your wisdom tooth. So, food can get trapped. It's a breeding ground for yes, bacteria. For bacteria. Okay. And you are not able to clean that area properly. Exactly. And you also spoke about pain and discomfort. A lot of people complain of swelling around uh, the wisdom teeth. So, is it a common thing that you've observed? Yes, it is a common thing. <clears throat> Mainly what happens is that uh, this condition is known as pericoronitis. So, what is pericoronitis? Basically, it is the inflammation of the gums or the soft tissues which is surrounding the partially erupted third molar. It is basically swelling of your gums which is covering your third molar. It generally occurs with your lower third molars. Now what happens is that mainly the patients complain of uh, pain or swelling in the region of their third molars or it could be a bad taste, bad breath or bleeding or even pus discharge from beneath the gums which is covering the third molar. So, this pericoronitis is one of the most common reasons as to why we remove your third molar. Now, unless the cause is removed, this pericoronitis is a recurrent condition requiring 
multiple episodes of treatment. So, if you are experiencing signs and symptoms of pericoronitis, it is advisable you see your dentist and they plan on removing your wisdom teeth. So, that is a once and for all solution yes, rather than it, just treating yes. the swelling and the pain. I, in your this opinion, it is yeah. it's better to get the tooth extracted. Exactly. So, when does a patient actually realize that, okay, this is the right time? Because sometimes this smelling may come up and on its own it may disappear, disappear. pain. And then, you know, people always try and put off, uh, you know, visiting the, the dentist, dentist and uh, surgery is always a bit of a scary procedure. So like I said, pericoronitis is a recurrent condition. Okay, you treat it with uh, analgesics, antibiotics, the condition subsides for some time and then this is going to recur again. So, mainly what patients experience would be pain in the region of their third molar, which can come and go sporadically or could be persistent. Okay, then they could also experience swelling and pain in the region of the third molar. Also, there could be bleeding and pus discharge. And some patients also complain of stiffness in the jaw, where they find it difficult to open their mouth. So, in case you are experiencing such symptoms, it is advisable you meet your doctor Dentist and they to prevent further yes. problems. Yes. So, this is the right time. If, the, if all these symptoms show up, then I feel it is better not to delay, yes. uh, get it removed. So, doctor, let us say the wisdom tooth is not giving any visible problems, that patient is perfectly fine and comfortable with it. Do you think it is advisable to just retain it, you know, till the time a problem comes up or maybe never have it removed in your lifetime? Is it okay? Okay. So, wisdom teeth that are not removed need to be monitored closely because they are at a potential for developing problems at a later stage. Like I said, if the tooth is not interrupted properly, food can get trapped. Okay, and this will cause the cavity causing bacteria to grow. So, be sure to floss around your wisdom teeth and visit your dentist regularly so that they can evaluate your wisdom teeth and your overall dental health. So, constant monitoring is definitely is def required. Yes. And uh, talking about extraction of uh, wisdom teeth, could you please throw light on the actual procedure? Is it a surgery as uh, people would normally call it a surgery? but? Uh, in your opinion, is it a minor procedure and how is it done exactly? So, now once we have taken the decision, okay, to remove your wisdom tooth, uh, a thorough pre-operative planning is done, wherein we would take an x-ray mm -hmm. or also known as an OPG. It is a panoramic x-ray, so that we understand the position of your uh, wisdom tooth in relation to the adjacent teeth and the neighboring structures. Then we give the patient the option whether they would want to do the procedure under local anesthesia or general anesthesia. Okay, so that option is also, available. also given, yes. In okay. apprehensive patients, we prefer to do the procedure under general, general anesthesia. anesthesia. Okay. Yeah. So the surgical procedure involves making a small cut in the gums, which is surrounding your third molar, and then we remove adequate amount of bone surrounding the tooth. Okay. Then we will cut or section the tooth into two pieces and then we will remove it. Okay, then the wound that is there, we would close it by placing a few stitches. Okay, so even the tooth is cut into two pieces, you cannot just remove it completely. So in certain on cases, bio. we would be able to remove the tooth completely. Now in some cases where it would be difficult to remove the tooth in one piece, we would have to uh, split cut. it to facilitate its removal. And Now and after uh, the procedure, a few stitches would be placed like I said, right? So, these stitches, if it is non-resorbable, by non-resorbable, I mean that they do not go off mm -hmm. on their own. So, your doctor would advise you to come approximately after one week to remove those stitches. Now, the removal of stutures does not cause any discomfort. So, there is absolutely nothing to be worried about. Good to know that. Yeah. And uh, one more thing, what can a patient uh, expect immediately after this procedure? Obviously, maybe pain may not crop up immediately because uh, the effect of anesthesia would still be there. But uh, what, how should a patient be prepared for this, for the after surgery care? See, immediately after the procedure, uh, the, like you said, the effect of local anesthesia would last for a few hours hmm. after surgery. So, very little discomfort is felt. Now, by taking the prescribed analgesics at the right time, most of the patients will be able to overcome the discomfort that is associated with the procedure very well. So, immediately after the procedure, 
generally your discomfort will be less because you would be taking analgesics and also the effect of the local anesthesia would be there for some time. Uh, so doctor, will there be bleeding? Like you mentioned, it has to be cut open. So apparently there will be some sort of bleeding. So if that's the case, how long will this last after the surgery? So most of the bleeding, we control it during the intervention itself. And after the procedure, we place cotton gauzes at the extraction site or the surgical site to apply pressure. A minimal amount of oozing from the extraction socket or the surgical site is very normal and there's nothing to be worried about. It will stop on its own by careful application of cotton gauzes. And what are the potential side effects of having the wisdom teeth uh, removed? So patients do experience some amount of swelling in the region of their mouth and cheek following the surgery. And this becomes more apparent on the first or the second day after the surgical procedure. Now this swelling can be minimized by the application of ice externally for the first 24 to 48 hours. Now another complication or another side effect could be difficulty in opening their mouth. So active mouth opening exercises from the day after surgery till you remove your stitches will ensure that you have adequate mouth opening. Now there's another side effect which is known as a dry socket. So now what is dry socket? Basically once we extract the tooth, a blood clot is formed at the extraction site. Now this blood clot will get dislodged for various reasons and this will cause pain. Okay, it's basically throbbing pain that happens three to five days after the procedure. They could also experience some unpleasant taste. So this condition is treatable and there's nothing to be worried about. Now, in very few cases, patients could also uh, experience damage to their nerve. Okay? In such cases, what they experience is generally numbness or tingling in their lower lip, chin or half of their tongue. But this is temporary and lasts for a few weeks to a few months. So it is definitely reversible. Yes. So there are no major side effects that one has to be concerned about. Whatever may happen, maybe for a few days and with analgesic so is, and yeah. painkillers, they should be fine. But normally, how long is the recovery process? One week or a few days? How, how long does it take? So now every individual is different, right? So the recovery would be different from person to person. But if we define recovery as the end of uh, symptoms of the procedure, this is generally 7 to 10 days. Most of the discomfort will begin to wear off from the third day onwards. And how long does the patient need to be on medication? You spoke about analgesic. Do you also give antibiotic to prevent infection? Yes. And for how long would that be? So for most patients, approximately 3 to 5 days of analgesics and 5 to 7 days of antibiotics would be sufficient. Now it is important to remember that even if you're not experiencing any symptoms, you must take your medication as mentioned by your doctor for the full duration. Okay. And what are the instructions that you normally give a patient after the uh, extraction is done, after removing the teeth? So it is advisable you take rest for the first 24 hours. Avoid any physical exertion as this could result in bleeding. Avoid eating or drinking anything hot as this may prolong the bleeding. Next, do not drink anything with a straw or do not spit forcefully as this will dislodge the blood clot that is formed and the bleeding may resume. Okay? Do not touch your finger also in that region because this could result in infection and delayed healing. Absolutely no smoking. Okay? And from the next day after surgery, you can take little lukewarm water put a bit of salt in it and use it to gargle your mouth. Also, for the first three days after surgery, restrict yourself to soft diet and take your medications as prescribed by your doctor. Do not miss them. So doctor, uh, do you think pregnant women should take any extra care when it comes to wisdom teeth? So the hormonal changes that happen during pregnancy makes your gums extra sensitive, resulting in inflammation and bleeding. Now in many cases these issues will affect your wisdom teeth and results in pain. So wisdom teeth removal is best done before pregnancy but 
if at all there arises a need that you must have to remove your wisdom teeth during pregnancy, it is advisable to do it during your second trimester. So prior to pregnancy, it is advisable you get a complete dental checkup done. So ideally you would suggest that women get a complete dental checkup done prior to their pregnancy and as a last resort in case there are problems you feel that it's still okay to do it in the second trimester, right? Yes, it is better to get a complete dental checkup done before pregnancy and like I said if at all there arises a need we would remove it during the second trimester only if leaving the tooth would cause more complications, okay? If we can postpone it we would postpone your treatment. So, Doctor, it's time to wrap up the episode. So, any takeaway message for our viewers? If you could just explain in a nutshell uh, what we discussed here today for the benefit of our viewers. So, in case you are having problems associated with your wisdom teeth or your third molars, do visit your dentist at the earliest so that you can avoid any further complications. And wisdom tooth removal is something you don't have to be worried about. We are here to look after it. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Thank you for those reassuring words. So viewers, as Dr. Ravina rightly mentioned, wisdom tooth extraction is not a big surgery. It's something that can be done in a very safe way. So in case you experience any pain or symptoms, please do seek timely medical intervention because retaining the wisdom tooth under those con uh, conditions may actually adversely impact your oral health. So keep smiling, flaunt your pearly whites always, stay healthy and happy. We'll be back with another episode of BMC Global Life Al Hilal Health World next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Till then, this is Anupama signing off. Good night, stay happy and stay safe.